Welcome everyone uh, to this investigation of Psalms and consideration of Psalms as we try and think about our spiritual life and particularly about developing a closer walk with God. And I would, I would summarize it sort of in a way in conversations with God, talking with God. How, how do we do that more honestly and deeply? Uh, of course, the parallel would be similar to developing relationships with others in which we try to get beyond talking about uh, the weather, sports teams, or uh, whatever kind of events that are sort of uh, in our life and are important, but <clears throat> uh, not really getting down to our deepest thoughts and <clears throat> deepest emotions. So that's, that's what we're trying to, trying to do, and we're doing that by exploring Psalms to look at the lives of faithful people in the past <clears throat> who have walked with God and to see how their uh, life was. So, <coughs> excuse me for a bit of a cough here. So last week we explored Psalm 103 to try and get an emphasis on the uh, nature of God and thinking about God and to see about his compassion and his steadfast love and his forgiveness for us and his understanding of us. And that's critically important uh, to know that kind of person uh, in terms of who God is, in terms of his character, because to become open with someone, God, in this case, uh, you have to believe that he is trustworthy and that you're safe uh, before you'll risk any kind of honest conversations with him. So uh, this week we're going to explore Psalm 139, which also explores some more about the nature of God, what God is like, <clears throat> but it moves, uh, I don't know if a little more personally, than the past Psalm 103, but it does build on that because it describes what uh, God knows about us. Now in Psalm 103, we learn that God, you know, understands that we're but dust and so he has sympathy for us. This Psalm goes on to explore that uh, God knows everything about us. He knows our thoughts. He knows where we are. Our location where we live he he, he knows uh, our beginning and our end now uh, some of that might seem a bit frightening uh, to to know that God knows everything we think because all of us and maybe some of us are better natured than others but uh, all of us have some deep thoughts and things in us that uh, we would rather not reveal to anyone and would prefer that God not know and that we could keep hidden from him if possible for fear that if he knew, uh, he wouldn't like us anymore sort of like sometimes uh, we have to tiptoe into relationships with people and explore it a bit because if sometimes and we may be right if people really knew what we were thinking or really knew what we were like just completely unvarnished uh, they'd think less of us so I think we carry that over into our relationship with God and so this psalm helps us to think through that so we're just going to walk through it, and uh, then we'll discuss it more on Thursday night. So uh, Psalm 139 begins with the acknowledgement that God knows all of our thoughts. O oh Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. So this indication that God is, is looking at us, he's searching us, uh, hang on to that thought for the end. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. So God knows long <laughs> way in advance. 
You discern my going out, my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways, not just some of our ways, but he knows everything we do. Be <clears throat> Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. <laughs> so that would be the sort of thing where uh, the thoughts, sometimes, there are thoughts I, I don't express because I know better than that, but uh, God knows them anyway. You hem me in behind and before. You've laid your hand on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Now, uh, I mentioned before, some of these might be sort of frightening thoughts to begin with. God knows everything, every thought we have. And then uh, there's imagery, you hem me in, uh, behind and before. Now that imagery can be good or bad. Uh, it's like a hedge. Now a hedge can have thorns and be prickly, but a hedge can also be protective. And I think that's the case in this case, that God is a hedge around us, that he's protecting us uh, like he was a hedge for Job. Uh, and so, uh, and then he says, you've laid your hand upon me, which could sound good or bad, but all of this the psalmist considers good, and you know that because such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Now, now it could be the aspect of, that's just to think about you knowing everything is incredible, but I think it also has a nuance uh, of it's a good thing, and I base that on primarily how the psalm develops and then what you see at the end. So. Uh, just trust me at this point that these are good things, that God knows every thought we have. He knows every movement we make, and uh, it's good. Then the next part is that God uh, knows every location we are in, every place, and, and uh, again, uh, depending, that could sound good or bad. But let's notice, just kind of begin to have a sense of that as we read. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee <clears throat> from your presence? Now, that could be good or bad. In other words, you know, I can't get away from you because you're everywhere. So that could sound bad, but let's just uh, keep reading. If I go up to the heavens, you're there. And if I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, that would be on the east, if I settle on the far side of the sea in, in Palestine, that would be the west, so from east to west, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. So this is in part why I think this is all a good thing, is because he says, uh, no matter, he said, I think he's saying, no matter where I go, it's good because you're going to be there. I can't go anywhere that you won't be there uh, with me. It, it's, it's just uh, wonderful because uh, you're guiding me, and it's your right hand, and the right hand is the hand, arm of strength. So your strength goes with me. This is all good. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, perhaps that's a frightening image. He says, even the darkness won't be dark to you. It doesn't matter. You know, if, if darkness covers me, uh, you're still there. The night will shine like the day, and darkness is as light to you. Uh, and that's been very comforting to me in the past sometimes when I've woken up in the middle of the night and thought I heard sounds in the house or been frightened or been in a strange place and, and that, uh, that God is there. Uh, darkness doesn't hide him. And then it goes on to say that God knows our beginning and end. For you created my inmost being, so not only outward but inward. You knit me together in my mother's womb, so very beginning. And then uh, again, good, this is all good because he says, I praise you because I'm fearfully <clears throat> and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. And I think he has specifically in mind people. <laughs> all, all God's works are wonderful, but he's talking about him, himself, isn't he? He's talking about uh, people. I, I know that full well, and, and so it's, uh, it, it's in the world, uh, you know, when we talk about self-esteem, it, it's that God has made us, and he's made us well, and we, we, we've come to that conclusion 
whatever frailties we have, that uh, God has created us well, and, and that has become a truth for us. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, just kind of metaphorical language. Your eyes saw my unformed body all the day, and so at the very beginning and then the end, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And so I don't want to oppress this too far, uh, but I think there is a sense in which uh, we have the right number of days. Now, uh, I say that hesitatingly because it, it does seem like sometimes people's lives are cut too short, doesn't it? Uh, but there's also a sense of, I think, comfort that, um, you know, God knows what he's doing. And uh, we can rest in that. And so, uh, so the summary then that indicates that all is a, this is really good is he says, How precious to me are your thoughts. So these thoughts as he's been having about God knows everything about me. And he goes wherever I am. I, I, he's always with me. And then he's made me, and he knows how long I will be on this earth. And that, 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 all that's really precious. It's just really precious thoughts. How vast is the sum of them? When you begin thinking about all this, I think you can just think and think and think and ponder it more and more. If I were to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. So sleep, awake, he, he's just, when I wake, you're, you're the first thing. Uh, the, all my thoughts there. So all this is really good about how much uh, God knows us. Now, uh, there's a section next is uh, probably troubling for maybe many people uh, because it moves into uh, uh, identification with God that he is against God's enemies. And it sounds uh, pretty vengeful. Uh, and so uh, we may wonder, well, should we study that? Should we skip over that? Sounds unchristian, sub-Christian. Uh, how should Christians apply that? Uh, should we ignore it? Uh, but I'm not going to ignore it. I'm just going to walk through it and offer a couple of suggestions without kind of doing a deep dive on it because we can talk about it more later in some other psalms, and I'll, I'll do that. If only you would slay the wicked, O God, away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Do not your, your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them but my enemies. Now, uh, I grew up hearing that, uh, being told, you know, probably when I was a child, I, I said I hated somebody, or and, and then, you know, my mom telling me, no, no, we shouldn't ever hate anybody. Well, that on one hand, that that's true. And so that that's part of this that all sounds very vengeful and, and hateful. Uh, but uh, the way I'm going to take it for this short period is I just, uh, my application of it is, uh, in kind of a simple, very oversimplified approach for this uh, purpose uh, of this psalm, is that the, the psalmist is, is simply identifying with God and he is against what God's against. And there are people that hate God and are God's enemies and speak against God. And I think this psalmist is just saying, I'm against them too. I, God, I'm with you on this. Uh, and uh, I'm against them. Now, uh, it's not just uh, in this, in all, what we sometimes call the Old Testament, that this is true. I mean, there's... Uh, Jesus is not always meek and mild. Uh, in Matthew chapter 11, I'm just going to refer to this, but he, he, he brings down judgment and woes on, on uh, uh, towns like Capernaum. And he says, it's going to be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for you, because if the miracles that have been done in you, in Sodom and Gomorrah, that have been done in Capernaum and some of these other cities, they would have repented. Well, that sounds very harsh kind of language, uh, 
and my only point there is uh, that God is a God of justice and there will be a day and even sometimes today just uh, God does do justice but ultimately everything will be just and so I'm trying to primarily emphasize the love of God the grace of God and the mercy of God because I think that dominates uh, without saying well God is never a uh, angry about anything or, you know, and this goes into a longer application, uh, that God's people should never be angry about anything. Uh, I would be so bold to suggest that uh, there are ought to be there ought to be things God's people are angry about. That if people are being hurt and and it just doesn't bother us at all, then I think there's something wrong there. Well, that's probably enough to camp on that. So, but it seems like kind of a almost. <laughs> somebody later put this in here which I don't believe but it, it sounds out of sync with the rest of the psalm so just kind of put that on the back burner for now and let's let's move on and then um, the psalmist then winds up so what is all this knowledge uh, about God knowing us and where we are all of our thoughts and uh, and and our beginning and our end what what kind of posture should that bring about well, uh, as I've already mentioned, the first response might be to, oh, well, you know, uh, that is scary if God knows everything about me because there are things about myself I don't like. And if I don't like some of that, how much more will God be upset with it? But as I've suggested, these are all good things, and in particular in regards to prayer, uh, what I would hope was that that would bring us to a point where we we begin to talk more honestly about to God about struggles we're having, uh, sins, you know, being confessional, honest, wrestlings, weaknesses, all those sort of things, because it's not like that we're going to surprise God. It's not like uh, God and the angels are, you know, we, we uh, are talking and we say something. And uh, God is saying, wow, I did not see that one coming. <laughs> you know, or that God has said, I, I am just so shocked about that. Uh, I can't believe that person was thinking that. Can you believe that that, was, uh, that person was thinking those sort of terrible thoughts? And, and, uh, and so for me... Uh, for example, uh, and, and one thing this helps helps us with is it, we begin to see some things about ourselves we, we are probably blind to, that we become more open to. For, for example, over, you know, I don't know, the last 10, 20 years or so, uh, I, didn't under, I didn't know this when I became a Christian, but I've also, uh, so I put away a lot of the more obvious sins, but I but I'm still silent, sort of surprised at, at thoughts that come into my mind and, that are so petty. Uh, and sometimes I, I talk with God about that, and I, and I don't much tell anybody else, because <laughs> uh, it's not like they're terrible, evil thoughts, but the, it's embarrassing. It's just embarrassing at this stage of life that I would be so shallow and unspiritual and petty. I, it's just, but I wouldn't know that if I wasn't developing a relationship with God when more and more I'm kind of aware of things and telling him things. So that's, that's how we develop intimacy. Like, again, like you do with friends or a spouse uh, in which you're going deeper and deeper in which you, you can say to this person, uh, here, here I am. I'm unvarnished, and God can handle that, and I believe God loves that in terms of that honesty, because then then we can change, and so from that then kind of this changing can come about. So notice the, the ending of the psalm: "Search me, O God." So isn't that interesting? So because uh, we because we know and trust God then we invite him into our lives and we say, search me. I mean, that's a bold statement when you start inviting God in to search me and know my heart. Well, 
God knows it already, but I, I think part of that is we're, we're acknowledging and asking him to come in, even though he knows us, so it may sound, it doesn't, doesn't make good sense by math, but it's inviting him in. And then to test me, wow, okay, you gotta really trust someone. You gotta really trust God to ask him to test you. Uh, I don't always do that real regularly. Uh, and then know my anxious thoughts. Because I'm anxious, all, all the no, no these. So it's kind of like we're asking God to do what He's already doing. But I think it's like we're not that He needs permission, but we're inviting Him in. We're inviting God in, and uh, then see if there's any offensive way in me. I think that's so remarkable because uh, I know there's offensive ways in me that maybe other people don't see, but God sees, and I see. I know. And so, God, come in, and or, or if there are some <clears throat> areas in my life, some dark corners in my life that I'm not aware of, show those to me, because I, I want to know. It's hard, it's painful, but I, I want to know. And then the final thing, and lead me in the way everlasting. Come in, s s see my life. Show me my heart and my life, and show me things that are harmful to myself and others, and then lead me in a good way. Isn't that marvelous? And so I think before we can get very far in our relationship with God, we've got to at least begin recognizing that and begin honestly, and not and and uh, and we don't have to be fearful about it. Because God is gracious; He knows us; He understands us; He made us; He knows how long we're going to last. He 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 takes care of us like children. It'd be like children coming to a parent and saying, you know, uh, Mom, Dad, I did this. And uh, they, they take the child into their arms and say, I'm glad you told me and let's work on this together. So uh, Thursday night, uh, take some time, meditate, think about this, and then we'll discuss it uh, with each other some more on Thursday night. Blessings on you.